guys, you may be wondering who we are this week. Power, purpose, and uh, a few familiar faces. Oh yeah, this absolutely must be a threat event. Threat up, y'all. It's a beautiful day, don't you know? It's a beautiful day. This is the thread. In case you haven't figured it out, we're at the grand opening of the new M1 Bank in De Pere. And it's more than just a bank opening. It's a celebration, and not just of potential transactions, but of existing and potential relationships. We just want to make a maximum investment into the community that says, an investment enough that says we're here for the long haul. Permanence. Permanence. We had to have a mission, we had to share the mission, and we had to have purpose behind that mission. You know, when we get down to board meetings and we're discussing things, I think it all kind of circles back to that, that original message, you know, the power of purpose. To have that sense of, of pride, principles, and, and purpose, and that mission, it's contagious. So the Power of Purpose campaign is M1 Bank's vision of empowering local St. Louis charities to get a platform in the community and to be eligible to win a $10,000 check. All we're going to do is narrow it down to the five, and we'll let everybody else decide from there. This is all about spreading the word and really getting the community engaged and involved and saying, I have a voice and this is who I'm voting for and this is why. It all comes back to us walking out our faith and helping others walk out their faith and helping others have hope when they don't have hope, help others have purpose when they don't have purpose. They're your neighbors. They're, they're the people you interact with, the people you go to church with, the people that my kid plays t-ball with. And, and to be able to, to give back to a community is important. We're not here just to give. We're to here to build partnerships and relationships. Banking is a relationship business. Many businesses are. But in banking, you're talking with people about something extremely personal, and that's their money. I think that it, it basically centers everything we do as a bank. We're a relationship-driven bank, and so we want to you know, talk to people, get to know them, and really be able to help each individual. I think if you look at it from the standpoint of it's more about other people than you, um, it makes M1 Bank very inviting to customers, other employees, really just across the board. People will, will see our bank, but what we really want to spread is our mission um, and the heart behind it. What a blessing M1 Bank is to our community. And look, to celebrate their bank opening, they bless two charities by giving them a $10,000 check. One of those charities, African Vision of Hope. Wait till you hear Judy's story. Hope is a Christian organization. We work in Zambia, Africa, and our vision is to help uh, vulnerable and orphan children be released from extreme poverty and, and know the purpose that God has for their lives. How did this all get started for you? Be careful what you pray for. I was in banking, uh, five kids, my retirement was planned, and I prayed one night, Lord, help me see things through your eyes. And uh, he disturbed my life and changed it at that moment. We had the opportunity to have a boy in our home from Zambia and uh, God literally just broke our hearts. And you know, when God breaks your heart, uh, a lot of times then he starts moving you along to his purpose. And it wasn't in our plan. I didn't know where Zambia was on a map. I had, didn't know what an orphan child looked like. I didn't know what extreme poverty was. And uh, I wasn't equipped. It is a journey, a lot of times in the miry pits, but there's joy and there's peace when you see a child's life transformed and changed from the streets to never having a hug, to understanding what God's love is, to putting them in a desk, to seeing them graduate high school, and to go on and disciple others. We believe that one of the steps out of extreme poverty is educating a child. And they don't have access. We rescue street children from uh, human trafficking, being slow, sold into slavery, becoming child brides. We put them in a classroom. We love them. 
we disciple them, we give them a meal every day, we get them through a school education, and we turn them loose to disciple their country. So our staff in Zambia is all Zambians. And, and they're becoming godly leaders and men, and they're changing their country. A gift like this can take a time, like right now when we're in severe drought, to not only feed that child, but also help embrace their family who's starving. Most of our children, the only meal they eat is in our school every day. A gift like this can put a child in a desk. Many of our children are sitting on floors. A gift like this can give them a pencil. A gift like this can give them um, some, some counseling to help them walk through the journey that they've been on. A gift like this can put a pair of shoes on their feet. A gift like this can change a life. I mean, that's what we're about. That's about kingdom building and being generous givers. So, amen to them. We get to do this. We don't have to do it. We get to be part of this incredible journey. Did you catch what Judy said about no wasted experience? It was her experience in banking that prepared her to serve in the ministry she's serving now. And now it's a bank that has gifted her with a blessing to help her do a ministry. Pretty cool, right? Hey, that's not the only organization that was given a gift. Hope Community Project. And wait till you hear what they're doing in Haiti. Hope Community Project is a mission in this, uh, the country of Haiti. Our mission is orphan prevention. Uh, we do that through strengthening families and communities uh, in the city of Gonaive in Haiti. The mission really started 10 years ago uh, when there was uh, an enormous earthquake in Haiti uh, that basically destroyed the, country, uh, the city of Port-au-Prince. I had the opportunity uh, shortly after the earthquake to go and visit and tour Haiti and kind of see what was going on there uh, and came back um, after that visit um, and decided that, that I wanted to do something. Through my business, we created the Hope Community Project. We went down there thinking we were gonna build an orphanage and start taking care of orphans. And what we discovered um, after working in Haiti for a couple years was that the problem really wasn't a need to care for orphans. Uh, the need was really to prevent children from becoming orphans. 80% of children in orphanages in Haiti and every third world country are not orphans. Uh, they are children who are victims of poverty, whose families uh, would like to take care of them but can't. And so after a couple years of, of working there and actually building an orphanage, gathering children into that orphanage, when we discovered what was really going on and what the truth really was, uh, we backed up and redirected our resources and our focus into the community to begin stabilizing families and trying to prevent the, cir the circumstances that were leading families from giving their children over to orphanages, reluctantly, uh, but in order to really save them uh, and to help them survive. So for the last eight years, we've made an enormous progress in a community, um, helping this community develop, sustain itself, stabilize itself so that families can keep their children at home. At its root, the issue is poverty. The people of Haiti are, are hardworking people, but there's no jobs, there's no work. So we're creating jobs, creating opportunities, putting people to work. So we've created a scholarship program and we're putting, uh, we've got some 70 kids uh, in our program that are in school that wouldn't otherwise be in school. And then the third part of our, our, our ministry uh, is a medical clinic. You know, healthcare is unavailable. Uh, the, the people in our community have zero access to healthcare. So we started a medical clinic. It's staffed by a Haitian doctor, a Haitian nurse, uh, and we're seeing thousands of patients a year. If they can stay healthy, they can keep working. They can keep working, they can support their families, and they can support their families, they can keep their kids in their homes, and they don't have to put their kids in orphanages. And that's our goal. The simple answer is I believe that God has called us in his word to care for orphans. So that's what I'm doing. Did you catch the common thread there? Hope Community Project was born out of a business wanting to give back. And now they're being funded by a business that's decided they're going to be all about giving back. And not just to those two organizations we featured. They've got a lot more partners. I think you'll recognize some. We'll have that coming up. Our first mission is bring glory to God. That's why we're here. We have a talent. It just happens to be banking. So M1 Bank is banking on a mission um, fueled by the power of purpose. It gets a point in your life where you've got to live it every day, not just believe it. I'm believing that this is going to catch on and, and we're all going to 
right up. For us in our house, this is how we're going to serve the Lord and, and His purpose. And we're going to do it through the financial institution that happens to be called M1 Bank. Do you know someone who is committed to changing lives in your community? Well, don't keep it a secret. Tell us about it. We're always looking for story ideas from all around the area, and you can help us find them. If you know of a neighbor or a good Samaritan devoting their time and talents to helping others, then go to our website and send us an email to so what at the thread stl.com. You can also contact us on our Facebook page, and you just might see it on the thread because we love sharing the good news happening all around our town. Hey, Threadheads, thanks for joining us this morning. Are you picking up on a theme here? We like bringing joy, creating community, transforming lives. That's what this show is all about. We are so much stronger when we come together than we ever are when we separate and divide. We want to continue this mission. We want to help this city thread up and be the most it can be. So you want to be a part of the team? You want to help us on that mission? Go to threadstl.com and learn how you can be a Threadhead and help us thread up, y'all. It's hard to believe we're in season three of The Thread, considering that in the beginning, Virginia and I knew next to nothing about owning a show or running a nonprofit. Circle of Advisors Securus has been a part of The Thread Circle of Advisors since day one, walking alongside us as we walk out this new journey that God has called us to. And if they can help a couple of hot messes like me in Virginia, they can certainly help you too. Tim, we've been proud to walk alongside of The Thread, and we'd be honored to walk alongside of you too. Hey, Threadheads, we're celebrating here in De Pere, the grand opening of the new M1 Bank location. And earlier we told you how M1 Bank is not just about being transactional as a bank. They're about being relational in their community. And they've got some great relationships and partnerships here in this community. And one of them is with the Kauffman Fund. Kauffman Fund is a 501c3 organization that benefits veterans, their children, and their families in the uh, St. Louis region. We do this in memory of my brother, Ralph Kaufman, who was an Air Force veteran for four years. My brother was about 12 years older than I, and he was like a father and mentor to me. When uh, he passed in 1990, we started doing this in his memory. He was on a lot of charity boards. He was uh, an inspiration to a lot of people. He always reached out to help whoever he could. I learned that from him. And uh, we have a real passion for helping veterans and children here in the St. Louis region. For over the last 20 some years, we have raised and given away way over a million dollars to help veterans, children charities, and their families. The best part about that, Tim, is we're all volunteers. We have no paid employees. Well, we do our an annual golf tournament is our main fundraiser, which M1 Bank has become our title sponsor, which has just been a blessing to us. And we give away Christmas trees every year in December. Uh, in the last four or five years, we've given away about 1,700 trees and stands for free to veterans' families. You know, there's still 20 veterans a day, believe it or not, dying from suicide. It's terrible. As we're working with the VA right now, we're going to be launching a mental health program for veterans. We take care of veterans with dental issues. We take care of veterans with legal issues. So we're doing a lot with, a, with an all-volunteer group of people. I think M1 Bank is doing a great service to the St. Louis community. Ken and Stephanie are they're great people. They want to do what they can. They really have that in their heart to be involved in the community and, and help others. Ken's sitting in a chair and I have some questions. You know what that means? It's time for the hot seat brought to you by Our Man Furniture. Yeah. All right, Ken, you're surrounded by your team from M1 Bank. They can help you out if you need some help. Thank you. The subject is banks. Oh, man. All right. you, you should do really well on this. Thank you. Clark, we'll start after asking the first question. You ready to go? Yes, sir. All right. A person who runs a bank may generically be referred to as a... Banker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, see? A shot in basketball that hits off the backboard is called a... Bank shot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uncle Phil's last name on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was... Banks. Yeah, absolutely. 
When someone is sure of a statement that they've said, they may finish by saying, you can take that to the bank. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, this is the place where a snowman keeps his money. A bank. What? A snow bank. <laughs> oh, a snow bank. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. Hey, Ken, Check guess me. what? You just conquered the hot seat, brought to you by Art Band Furniture. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Hey, Threadheads, you no doubt know Don Brown. Don Brown Chevrolet? Don Brown Chevrolet. Don Brown Chevrolet. And you probably know that Don has a flair for fashion and a knack for cars, but he also has a heart for people. I learned from my father a long time ago, it's not about one person, it's about the entire community. It is a car business, but it's a people business. It's about the people. It's not about the products, it's about the people. If you're in the market for a car, come to Don Brown, where it's people over process. And we're proud to be part of the Thread family, and we'd love to be part of your family. Imagine, if you will, a dark, stormy night. Through the pouring rain and lightning, you see a stream of water running through your yard that wasn't there before. You fear it will creep higher and higher, eventually invading your home. And you don't have flood insurance. You're about to enter a new dimension. You've crossed over into the flood zone. The truth is, we all live in a flood zone. And overland flooding can destroy your property with just the smallest amount of water, costing you thousands of dollars. Your only protection, flood insurance. The Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District wants you to know your zone. Be prepared and know the hazards of spring flooding. Go to knowyourzone.org to learn more. Or your next stop could be the flood zone. What? Our time's almost up together already? You mean I gotta wait till next Saturday? That's way too long. We gotta catch up during the week. I got a great idea. Hey, why don't you follow us on social media? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know, we've got content that doesn't actually fit on our 30 minute show, right? And we're adding new messages all the time. So follow us, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's our way to keep up with you throughout the week. And we can thread up all week long. Follow us, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. See you soon. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Brother, how are you doing, I'm man? Good, I'm good, I'm good. Dude, this what about is this amazing, thing? right? It's awesome. Yeah, it's great. I mean, have you seen right. all the threads here? Yes. I mean, yes, you're yes. here, Ken's here. Ken. I mean, Stephanie's here. Stephanie's here. I mean, Little Bit's here. Little, little Bit. Little Bit. Oh, Little, little Bit Foundation. Foundation. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know Rosemary? I know Rosemary. I haven't talked to her tonight, though. You, you know Rosemary? Yeah. How do you know Rosemary? Dude, Rosemary's instrumental in life arts even coming into being. What? Yeah, she's how I met Thomas and Justice. You kid. You don't know Rosemary. No, I don't know that story. Oh, dude, come on. You gotta, gotta introduce it to you. Little Bit Foundation is an organization that works with children living in poverty, making sure that they have everything that they need so that they can be successful and have an education that they deserve. The Little Bit Foundation has a really unique model. It's a wraparound service, so it's either direct service and us supplying things, working one-on-one -on -one with students, or bringing other organizations around so that the whole, all, every need is taken care of. And Brian was looking to um, support nonprofits this is before he started his nonprofit. And he was doing a concert series and he chose the Little Bit Foundation through an introduction from M1 Bank. Brian and I met, became good friends. I introduced Brian to the Little Bit Foundation. I so he was doing this series of concerts. We were driving people to the concerts and the proceeds were helping us with our mission. Um, Brian started working with us and volunteering with us and coming into our schools. So with Brian working with the kids at Confluence, which is one of our Little Bit schools, he realized that there was really a need for um, training and teaching and mentoring in the arts that was absent in certain demographics. Brian began Life Arts after he had connected with the Little Bit Foundation. Our children are now his children, so they have two families. I actually saw that building, I went through that building almost four years ago. Um, when there was an antique show there. And I went through there and I came back at that time and I told Ken, I said, Brian Owens needs to buy this building. This would be an amazing campus for life arts. Ken said, stay out of other people's business. <laughs> <laughs>
focus on what you, you do well. So when Brian sent me this building, I believe it was a year ago in October, possibly September, I told him that I literally dropped the phone. What I know is that when we all work together and we all connect with each other and we all see the potential and we take our egos out of it and we don't silent below ourselves, that's when the beauty happens. But when you are yielded enough to be an instrument for the Lord to use, to allow things to fall into place, His plan, because it's really never our plan, we have nothing to do with it, um, to Him be the glory for all of this. So all these threads strengthen our mission, it strengthens our opportunity to help more kids, and it will strengthen the outcome and our future of our city. Are those some amazing threads or what? Those relationships that have woven together to bring us to this particular point. Brought Brian with Little Bit Foundation, with M1 Bank, how they all work together. It's amazing. And M1 Bank just stepping out, deciding to make a difference. I mean, look at John with Community Hope Project. They just decided we want to we wanna make a difference in the world. They saw a need and they just moved to it. And then the connections were made and they're able to gain support from others. African Vision of Hope, Judy and her team, same thing. They wanted to make a difference. They were moved by a need that was right in front of their face. And they said, we've got to do more. And they just stepped out. And then the relationships were formed, woven together. The Kaufman Fund, same thing. And one bank sees what they're doing is awesome and says, we want to step to that. We can't do what you do. But we can help you do what you do. We're, we're so connected, it's not even funny. I mean, John Don, the poet, wrote a poem that said, no man is an island unto itself. Every man is a part of the main, a piece of the continent, a part of the whole. We're all connected. We're all in this together. M1 Bank's gotten that. They see that there's really no peace for any until there's peace for all. It's why when we watch a movie that really tugs at our heartstrings, we can connect with them because we see the image of people and we're people too. When one life is diminished, we're diminished. When one life is cut down, we're cut down. We lose a little bit because we're all connected. That's why Jesus never sent them out by themselves. He never sent out one person to go do the task. He always sent them out by no less than twos because we need each other. We need to be lifted up. When one of us falls silent, the other can pick up the pace. When one falls sick, the other can help out. I can minister to your poverty. You can minister to mine. And then when we, we, we have an even broader scope of relationships by bringing people in, we can serve a larger whole. Brian's mission of Life Arts Inc., born out of what he saw at the Little Bit Foundation. And then they provide the students for him to start Life Arts with. And now they're working together. And it's like Rosemary said, now his family is our family. They have two families. They get more people gathering support, surrounding them. Man, that, Jesus has called us to be community. What does he say in scripture? John 13, 34, as I have loved you, love one another. And what does he say all the time? Love God, love people. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. And when we realize how deeply we've been loved by God, how can we anything but love other people? Because we see how amazingly he's moved to our greatest need by giving his son to die for us on the cross that we may have everlasting life, despite our sins, our faults, and our failings. And then we're able to receive that love and go and give it to someone else. See, life's not about whoever has the most stuff wins. It's not what it's about. M1 Bank knows that. They know the greatest investment, we say it all the time on this show, the greatest investment in this world, the only one with lasting implications, with eternal significance is people. And they're investing in people. And that's what God has asked us to do, to invest in people, the way he's invested in us, by giving his son to die on the cross that we may live and have everlasting life. And they want to go out and love other people in the same way knowing that there's no peace for any until there's peace for all. And we can do our part to share that love with others. Go out and love people with the love that we've received in Christ Jesus. Well, that brings us to the end, but not the end. You know what I'm talking about. I talk about them all the time because I just think they're great people and they want to do what they can to help others. And that's the feeling that we have. And yes, they give us financial support and that we couldn't do what we do without that financial support, but it's, it's more than that. It's somebody believing that what you're doing is having an impact and they're in it for the long haul. And to help teach our community and our country that what we've been given 
is not just for us. More stuff that what we've been giving can change lives and generations. And to have a business or a bank like this come and embrace this is number one, unbelievable, unprecedented, and I am excited to see it. We're only here to serve the communities that we're in. So if you're selling chicken nuggets around town, but you're never giving back to the people that, that are supporting you, giving back to your customer bases, you know, their churches, their communities, their soccer teams, you know, we're not, you're never gonna grow. We're never gonna help uh, society get to where we need to be. I mean, obviously there's a bank in every corner, right? Um, but when you think of a bank, what do you think of? You know, you think of you know, money and making money and being driven by that. Uh, it's, it's really been an, an amazing thing to see and hear about this bank, what their values are, what their focus is, and to do something like this really reaffirms uh, that. We wanted the community to understand that we're committed to it, and we wanted to build something they were proud of. And I hope, hopefully this does that for everybody. Right. Spot Media Production Group.